Each of us has earned a paycheck of death. This payday someday is a result of sin. And sin always pays in worthless currency. But there's also a gift, eternal life. We've been offered this gift while free to us is very costly for God. It cost him his son. And the gift of eternal life is received only by receiving Jesus. The third thing we learn is eternal life is having a personal relationship with God now. That's the difference between sin's payoff and God's gift. Sin's payoff is a payday someday down the road in the future, but eternal life is received right now. It's something we get the moment we trust Jesus. Salvation is not a reward you receive at the end of the race. Rather, salvation is the gift you receive that enables you to run the race. That's the difference. What is eternal life? You ask most people and they say, living forever, existing forever. The only thing wrong with that is that some of you are so miserable right now in your life. The idea of existing as you are right now forever, that's eternal misery. No, eternal life is not a quantity of life. It is not how long it is, it's how deep it is, how wonderful it is, how good it is. If you want to know what eternal life is, look at John, the 17th chapter, where Jesus says, Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and know Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. What is eternal life? It's knowing God. It's knowing Jesus Christ. Do you want to know if you have eternal life or not? Here's the question. Do you know God? Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? As I've said many times before, some of you know Jesus the same way you know Abraham Lincoln. You know him as a historical figure, someone who lived and died and did great things. Do you really think that's going to bring eternal life? No. In fact, I'll even bring it up to date. I have a personal relationship with my wife. I know her. She knows me. We relate to one another on a daily basis. But do you know what? I don't know Patrick Mahomes. I believe he was MVP of Super Bowl 54 when he led the Chiefs to an incredible fourth quarter comeback as they scored 21 points in the final seven minutes. Here for the 49ers. Mahomes stepping up. He's throwing long downfield for Tyreek Hill. Got it at the 20 yard line and then spun down there. The first giant chunk of the game on third down and 15. And Mahomes guns it for 44 yards. I believe he was voted MVP of that Super Bowl and league MVP the year before. I read about him online. I believe I'd rather have him quarterbacking the team that I cheer for than any other player in the league. They fake the trap. Now Mahomes scrambling to his right. Holding it, holding it, gets off the hit, now lunging forward, and now fires it late, caught at the back of the end zone! Mahomes, magic! (laughs) Stop it. You're not allowed to play football at this level and toy with the guys on the other team. He looks like the dad playing in the backyard with all the kids, and they can't get him on the ground. Watch this! And now he's going to find the receiver stop in the little (laughs) push pad. Stop it. Stop it. Y'all saw that? I know y'all saw that. That's right. That's something you like. You do a match. I watched him play in L.A. once. It was a historic game against the Rams in the Coliseum, his first year as a starter. Both teams set all kinds of records for points scored in a game. I'd like to know him. I'm a huge Chiefs fan, and I've watched every game he's played in his short career. But I don't know Patrick Mahomes. I don't have a personal relationship with him. So which one is it for you? Can you honestly say you have the kind of relationship with God that you have with someone on earth you relate to on a daily basis or a regular basis? Or do you feel Jesus Christ is some superstar somewhere that, oh, it'd be nice, but you really don't know him? Well, you can know him. And here's life's greatest choice. God loves you so much. He's not going to override your will. He's not going to violate your ability to choose. He says, here it is. On one hand, 
you get the paycheck of sin. Your name's already filled in on the check. And what you receive is exactly death and hell. Nothing less, nothing more. But you know what? You can reject that and say, I don't want that. Instead, you can receive real life, the free gift of real life that Jesus Christ can give you. The choice is yours. It's not a decision in the head. It's a matter of the heart and will. How can you receive Jesus and the gift of eternal life? The third chapter of Revelation, Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door, talking about the door of your heart, and I'm knocking. If anyone will hear my voice and open the door, I'll come into them. He says, I'll have fellowship with them, and they'll have fellowship with me. As simple as I know how, that's what it means to be a Christian. Would you like to begin the journey, the relationship that you were created for and made for with the Creator Himself? Pray this prayer with me right now and mean it in your heart, and He promises to come in. Dear Jesus, I need you. I open the door of my heart right now and receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Fill me with your spirit. Take me. I'm yours. Thank you, Lord, for coming into my heart, for forgiving me of my sins, and for filling me with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer and meant it in your heart, he promised he'd come in. Lift up our eyes.